Oh, snap. She is a true native New Yorker. I think we might be the last two. <laughs> I was born here, she was born here. Right? She, after graduating the University of Rochester with degrees in journalism and philosophy, is a strong foundation for comedy. She returned to New York City to pursue stand-up comedy and journalism. She's published work in Time Out New York, and she worked in the comedy department there, other publications, The Ford, Death and Taxes magazine, and she has her own column called Examiner.com. Now, she's improv artist, she studied sketch comedy at the People's Improv, and she graduated from the Upright Citizens Brigade. I'm going to get all that. She's been performing all over the city in various comedy clubs, from Stand Up New York to the New York Comedy Club, and she lives in the East Village, <laughs> where she consumes mass quantities of cheese. <laughs> Doesn't exactly keep you regular, but it can give you a lot of fun. She also pretends to own the doll. She's about to come up here and do her thing. So what I need you to do to start picking up the starving, like building schools and curing diseases. 
Like, my chief concern, like the thought that plagues my mind the most out of anything in my life right now, is that you guys go home later and are like, eh, she was pretty funny. <laughs> so now I'm a little worried. Okay. <laughs> away from Israel stuff because I recognize I'm not there anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, just got the memo. Sometimes like, I don't really know how certain companies decide what makes an effective advertisement. Like I passed the Union Square movie theater and there was a poster outside that read, you said medium, we heard large. <laughs> I don't know, all I thought out of that is that like, the theater hire is like death and challenge. <laughs> So me and Israel maybe could have worked at this movie theater. I don't know. <laughs> but like, what if we turn the tables on them, right? Like you said, the ticket. Like, what? I don't know. What does a movie theater ticket come to these days? Like, one hundred dollars a pop? Yeah. So like, you said that's two hundred bucks. Um, I heard free. <laughs> All right. An encouraging heckler. You don't get that much. Um, or if you like, I don't know, apply that to your personal life, right? Like off the states. Like, oh yes. Like you said, you're not looking to date right now. Okay, because I heard June wedding! <laughs> uh, doesn't work. I, <laughs> guys, I don't always think like customer service is on my side. I went out to get a drink the other night and my car was declined, right? So I called my bank and they said there were no technical errors, which obviously leads me to believe that my car was being rejected for personal reasons. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Miss Klausner, we're glad you called. Um, there's nothing wrong with your account. Your car is working just fine. We just know how you get when you drink. <laughs> it took a crowded and sweaty subway to get here, um, as opposed to those private, luxurious subways you can get on, I guess. You all know so well. And this woman, like, she got on with a bicycle, like, taking up the space. Yeah, this guy's, I'm brought to a dark place, I apologize. Sometimes I have to get real in comedy. I'm like, but she took up the space of like four passengers. Like, we've all seen this, right? Uh -huh. I was like, I've seen this in New York, like, enough times where there's a joke here. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> we'll see you shortly. Um, I think, I think the MTA needs like bike bouncers. Right? Like, is it New York, like, shouldn't be able to use more than one form of transportation at a time? <laughs> No, you shouldn't. It's not like up for debate. You shouldn't. Um, like, I don't take the bus and like try to like sneak it in a cab. Um, I leave my house to walk somewhere and like a few blocks and I'm like, mm, I don't know, I'm actually kind of tired. Leap onto a nearby jogger. Um, room for one more, sir? Yeah. I don't know why. He just personified the man as a horse, but he just... I don't know what that means now, but I love your story, I love it. Um, don't do it anymore, but I love it. Uh, guys, I think I have a solution for the selfie epidemic. It's a problem, right? Selfie? I think what we need is a scare tactic. I'm not going to wait for you to agree, I'm going to assume you're on board. <laughs> texting and driving commercials, right? Like, they show, like, pretty, like, horrifying images, right? Like, devastating car accidents that teenagers are getting into, and, like, that's a little much for me. I think that's a little extreme. But maybe we do a little bit of it, you know? Like, like the next time if a girl goes into the bathroom of a club to take a photo of herself, right? <laughs> <laughs> the dude from Scream <laughs> pops up behind her. Uh, so it's as if she's looking to like an evil haunted mirror. <laughs> Scary stuff, right? But the thing is, he's actually there. And then he kills her. <laughs> so problem solved! <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, got a new problem on our hands, I just realized. A bloody murder, but less annoying, right? <laughs> That's one time. Okay. I digress. <laughs> My boyfriend and I like to role play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, nothing like kinky or saucy though. Uh, yeah, it's more so cutesy stuff. Like, I'll give you guys some examples. Uh, okay, like he'll pretend to be a tree, and I'll pretend to be a monkey, and like I'll climb him. 
all the way to the top. Uh, that's one. That's one. Uh, the other one. Uh, we'll pretend to be like big little penguins. And like we'll step on his feet. And we'll like waddle around the apartment together. And the whole mother snare. This woman's shocked. She's like, this is horrifying. I'm like, this is disgusting. Um, prepare herself. No. I don't know, like another one that's fun is like, um, one time I pretended to take my birth control. <laughs> but it was really just an orange Skittle. <laughs> uh, it was fun, because he played along, he like, pretended to get really mad. <laughs> then he threw some things, um, and then he pretend broke up with me, right? You guys know how that goes. Um, but then he really did take all his stuff and actually leave my apartment, and that was like six months ago. <laughs> so if anyone sees him, <laughs> you just let him know on my behalf that um, I'm ready to stop playing now. <laughs> Gonna use the safety word. <laughs> In this case, is loneliness. No. <laughs> These are jokes. <laughs> Uh, so, I really, in all sincerity, I've been reflecting on my last relationship lately. Like, what went wrong? Um, I don't know, like, and how I can grow and evolve, you know, better prepare for the next one, should it come along. And I realize at this point in my life, like, money really isn't that important to me. You know what I mean? Right? Like, looks and fame are. <laughs> Get their priorities together. <laughs> Saw a really excellent poster the other day. Um, it said, run for obesity, find the cure. And that's a good cause, right? Good cause, nothing wrong with that. Couldn't help but wonder though. Just throw this out there. Like, is it running the cure? It's <laughs> 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 an argument sake. I don't know, like if you know someone who's struggling, like a problem, you know what I mean? Like, are you really being the most helpful friend you can be by offering to exercise on their behalf? <laughs> But I, I'm a philosopher. I don't know. <laughs> I, I question things. I wonder. You guys on Twitter? <laughs> you seem like a hip crowd. So I'm like, you guys know computers? You guys know tables? You know air? Um, keep going, but I'll do my set instead. It's crucial I tweet for my career, and I don't know if that's clear, but that's this. Um, so apparently it's the only reason I'm not currently doing this set on Letterman, so I'm not tweeting enough. But like, I went to create an account, and I found I already had one from a few years ago. It was a writing job. So I already had 38 followers. Pretty good. And, yeah, pretty good. I'm just saying. And, and I was really excited, and I started tweeting pretty vigorously. And about like four days into my experiment, I log on. She's already on for it. I love that. Um, she's like, I don't even need a punchline. <laughs> so supportive here. Um, but I logged on for four days of tweeting to discover that I had lost 15 followers. <laughs> so people were more interested in my Twitter page when literally nothing was happening. <laughs> That's like not going to work for like three years. But like steadily receiving a paycheck every month. Like in the mail. I wonder you're like, you come online, you're like, wait, this is weird. I should be doing something in exchange for this money. I should be contributing and making an effort. You go into work, right? You spend a few days in the office. And then suddenly your boss pulls you aside and is like, um, hey, listen, I I don't know what you've been doing differently lately. <laughs> but my hands are tied, we're gonna have to let you go. <laughs> I usually not pills, but <laughs> you guys aren't charged tonight. I'm just doing thing. <laughs> if you want to make it sound like a laugh track from Seinfeld, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not. I'm here for you. Not me. Um, you know what's fun? Like when you have like friendship chemistry, like platonic romance. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like I met this girl recently, and like we were just like mental twins. Like you couldn't tell where she ended and I began. Like it was like firing in all cylinders. Until I love this guy because he's got like a booming silent laugh. <laughs> and we could just pan to him so everyone knows on my team. He's laughing. It's, it's all audio. 
but he's having the time of his life. I know. You know what I know. That's all that is. Because um, comics don't want laughter. Uh, they just they want pantomiming. I was telling a joke. Really sabotage myself. Oh yeah, so like we were really like the same person until we got to the subject of men, and then she was like, oh by the way, like I exclusively sleep with tall black guys, and I was like, mm, okay, we found it. That's where we differ, because I exclusively sleep with creepy lion psychos. So I'm glad you have the luxury to choose. Um, good for you. Speaking of which, uh. I, I should not have told him this because it's embarrassing. In college, I had this boyfriend that I took some like sexy photos for, but like like tasteful, not like Miley Cyrus like twerking, like a little more humble. And I remember we were dating, and like I was studying abroad that semester, and he asked me to, and I trusted him, and like whatever. That's why it was kind of upsetting because when I got back from the study abroad program, I found out that he had like showed his entire frat the photos. Yeah. So obviously, I confronted him, and I was like. Dude, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, how did you do that to me? Like, I trusted you. I wasn't wearing any makeup. Like, <laughs> <laughs> demand a reshoot. Um, so, do you guys like notice that when you're describing someone who's a race that's different than your own, it's like the one physical attribute you try to avoid mentioning at all costs? <laughs> Jewish white person thing, but like, I, I just, I lose my mind. Like, I wanted to set my Asian friend up with this guy who clearly wants to know what she looks like. That's fine. And I was like, oh, she is a tasty little dish. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain why those words just came out of my mouth. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I swear. Um, but I was like, all right, check it out. She's got like, she's like medium height, she's got brown hair, uh, two eyes. <laughs> on the face, and then she's got like this torso, and her legs just kind of shoot off of that. Um, the other time I was checking out at the store, and the woman at the register asked if someone had been helping me. But the person that assisted me was black, so I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I just, I didn't catch her name. And she was like, oh, that's okay, sweetie, you can just describe her to me. I was like, oh, okay. I so look forward to this challenge. I was like, okay, let's put it this way. If it was nighttime, Oh. <laughs> and she and I were both dressed in black. <laughs> she would be harder to see. <laughs> and she was like, oh, like, is she, is she black? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ma'am, please. <laughs> uh, not, listen, not everyone should speak, I realized. Um, it's just pretty shitty when they do just dumb things fall out of their mouth. And I was doing a show a few days ago, and this guy, as I was going on stage, said, Hey, make it count! And I was like, Um, can I choose whether or not things count? I didn't know that. Like, if a doctor screws up his patient's surgery, he'd be like, Listen, I know what you're thinking, but before you get into a tizzy, that I've sewn your foot to your ass. <laughs> to be fair, no one told me this one counted, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna skip on out of here, but I just want to share one intimate story because you guys have been great. Um, you don't know me enough yet. You literally know everything about me. Uh, if you can imagine, I always get into weird situations in doctors' offices. Um, I went to the it's hard to believe, but I went to the gynecologist a few weeks ago, and the nurse handed me a gown. And when she left the room, I realized I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? Like do you leave it open to the front? <laughs> do you leave it open to the back? Like underwear on, underwear off, like nipple pasties with tassels or without. It's not always clear. I got it wrong because the doctor came in and he said I left on too much underneath the gown. So I just start disrobing in front of him. <laughs> yeah, like very like Jewish showgirls. <laughs> Me, TR, I don't know. Um, Nobody won. So, okay, so I made sure I was like, I'm never putting myself in this situation again. That was embarrassing. So the next time I saw the doctor, I just took off everything beforehand. <laughs> so by the time he came in, I was just standing there completely naked. And I gotta share with you guys, uh, that was one awkward eye exam. 